wealth within. They gave me that feeling of trust. What you learned in the course was just mind-blowing. Amazing. It was phenomenal. It opens your mind up and makes you realise you don't know what you don't know. I've got the tools now. 100% worth it. Definitely get educated. Hello and welcome to Wealth Within's weekly hot stock tips. I'm Philip Tortevsky, Senior Analyst at Wealth Within, and we are Australia's most trusted stock market educators. Now, every Tuesday night, you can see me on the Australian Stock Market Show live on YouTube alongside two amazing professional traders, Janine Cox and Dale Gillum. Now, in the show, we answer important questions around the stock market, cover lots of great stocks and help you become a better trader. Today, we'll unveil what's hot and what's not for you, our viewers. But before we dive in to this week's stocks, I am joined today by Dale Gillum. Good morning, Dale. Hey, Phil. What a great week this is going to be. Oh, isn't it? Panic last, last week. <laughs> reversal this week. Sounds like a football match. It's all happening. Yeah, well, it is all happening. And I think this week's going to be a, a nice little telltale sign mm. of where the market is heading and why people shouldn't have panicked last week. But I know we're going to show you a hell of a lot of this um, in our re report today, aren't we? Well, we are. This week, we're going to uh, switch it up a little bit for you guys and show you uh, some global markets on how they performed and get into what really happened over the last couple of days. Now, we've done a great show on YouTube as well uh, over the last week, which uh, speaks very mm. much in length about what happened in that recent crash, if you will. But um, uh, So if you haven't watched that, please make sure you watch it. But now we'll get into the Dow and have a look at some of the... Well, we did promise in that video that we'd go and take you into the Dow, deep dive into that, into the S&P 500 and also... Um, why they came back, but also why you didn't need to panic as well. Yeah. So if you want to go to the screen right now, this is the Dow chart or the chart of the Dow Jones, which is the monthly on the left and the weekly is on the right. And as you can see there from this low back with this low back in October last year, you know, the Dow's gone up 27.99%. Mm. Up right up until the top in July. So having one bar down through there, that's not a big effort in my book, you know, in terms of it's not a crash. Now, obviously, if we go to last week, we can see here uh, the Dow. That was the week there of the 20th of July. It came down the next week. It was up a little bit the, the week after on the 3rd of August. This is the Friday move down, which made it close lower. So the Dow fell quite heavily on that Friday. Obviously, it gapped down on the Monday opening. But look, a push lower. But can you see a trough anywhere through here that it's broken? Oh, no, I mean, and the way it's reversed to me is really a telltale mm. telling sign. But what's also interesting is that, you know, obviously this panic happened through this month here. And if we just apply some metrics on this, you can see that the market fell around obviously 6%, obviously now closing all the way up to three. But just a few months ago, we had a very, very similar move up at that 5.5% where the market closed on the low, and this is April 2000. But it did a crash. 24. No, and there was no sign. There was no news saying the market was crashing. Mm. There was no um, panic on the streets, no media telling you that it's all over. So it's, but if you go back here, sorry, I don't want mm, to cut you off, mm, but that's this is the point here. We're mm, talking about April. So it had one, had a big week, big week, and a big week. So that was that whole move that you see on a monthly chart. And I'll do it again so you can actually see what it is. That's 5.71%. But this wasn't a crash, even though we had two big weeks going down there. So what's, what's the, the difference? difference? Yeah. And that's the thing is it's like because we had a big move over a couple of days through here. And if we go to the daily chart, I'll bring that up actually. Let's bring that up to a full screen so you can see it. And we go into a daily chart. So you can see the move here. So that was... Um, Friday the 2nd of August, so it, it uh, from the Thursday there, it gapped down, traded down, and then there's a Monday there, it got, went, went lower again. But look at that, one, two, three, four bars, it up. But I mean, as, as a trader, isn't it more important that you, regardless of whether the move happens over days, weeks, months, it's mm. volatility is volatility. Volatility is Whether volatility. it happens fast or slow, it will happen on our market. But the most important thing to do is to measure that volatility mm. and measure it relative to what has happened in the past. And as Dale mentioned, the, the Dow Jones has been going up 20 odd, 30 percent over the last couple of months. So uh, a fall of five, six percent is that a crash? No, it's not. But let's go. I know there was. Let's go to the seasonality chart mm. because what what happened uh, when you look at the seasonality chart? I did see announcements saying August is always a volatile month for the Dow Jones or the American market. But if you go to the chart now and have a look, we've got the seasonality chart up on the screen through here, um, and you can see here that. This is August. 
Mm. So July's it's the biggest month. This is the Dow Jones. We're going to say show you exactly the same thing for the S and P five hundred. But you're talking about July is always bullish and August is always bullish. So where's the volatility in mm. that? Obviously, we're getting here. September is the worst month of the Dow, and it's like three months of the year where it averages negative. And this is going. If you read this. This is from 1900 to 1924. So I figure there's a fair enough data there, <laughs> data sampling to know that. But on historically, the Dow Jones only has three down months in a year, historically on average. Mm -hmm. And that's really got to show you something. Now, quickly going to go and show you the stocks in the Dow Jones. Now, the Dow has about 30 stocks, and has 30 stocks, and it's a little bit different criteria than the S&P 500 or our all and all orders index. It's by market capitalization, but there's some other different criteria to get into the Dow. But you can even see last week, Caterpillar was up 5.42, Goldman Sachs up four, Salesforce up 3.51, Morgan, JP Morgan Chase up three, American Express up two. So here's the bottom part here. Even the worst stock, Intel, down 8.24, United down 5.27. But you know, here's a tech stock, 2.68 is Honeywell, Apple, was one of the magnificent seven, ended up down 1.65%. So, you yeah, know, Microsoft down 0.6, Amazon down 0.57. So, where's the big panic? Well, that's the thing. I mean, if you've ever, if, if there's ever been an example to mm. show you that you need to really do your own research and look at a chart and, and not, you know, mm. blindly follow what's being put out there on that um, uh, mainstream TV, because you can see just one quick look that. None, nothing so serious eventuated over the last week. In fact, if we were to take away all those headlines, it was very much a normal week on the market in terms of how that week averaged out, up, down, especially with the Dow Jones. You saw quite a few stocks that were in the green. So um, really keep that in mind moving forward. Now, Dale, I know you wanted to get into the S&P. Yeah, let's well. just we'll quickly go through the S&P 500, which yep. is the 500 stocks on the, the US market. And on your screen right now, I've got the monthly chart of the S&P 500. If you didn't know, if you were in a coma of the last two weeks, you wouldn't know anything's happening. No. It just looks normal. I mean, you've it really looks normal. Three weeks up, one week down. I mean, that in terms of flow mm. is very, very normal. It's actually quite bullish. So Yeah, it is quite bullish. And again, it didn't break below the below there of April last year. And look at it, it's closing right up there. And obviously this is August, so we're only you know halfway through August, basically. Mm. Um, so it's showing really, really, really good signs from this point in time. So I'm going to go through a little bit quicker, but let's bring up the weekly chart. And you can see here the S&P, it peaked on the 19th of July. The next week was down. The next, Then obviously the Friday, this week was a bigger fall. But look at this, it gap right down through here. So you can see why the media was trying to really sort of ramp it up and, and you know, sell more news because it dropped 3.6% on opening. Mm -hmm. And then the rest of the week it traded back up again. Yeah. So if we go to the daily chart, you'll see exactly the same thing again. It gapped on right down on opening, closed higher on that day, and then it kept moving up again, just exactly like the Dow. So let's go to the seasonality and have a bit of a look. And again, you know, that's July. August is basically flat on the S and P 500. Now, the difference between the S and P 500 and the Dow is the S and P 500, the top ten stocks, a lot of them are tech stocks. Mm. And we look if we look at the the top tech stocks, like specifically the Magnificent Seven. If you look at that, that's 27, 28, 29 percent of the of the S and P 500. So if they're moving up or down, the S and P 500 is. The Dow's not tech heavy yeah. um, because of some other big, big stocks in there. But you know, generally, it's still not a volatile month to me. And you've got another negative month ba barely back in February. So like the Dow, there's only three negative months, and this is going from what's that one, 1950 to 2024. So 74 years of history. Shows you nothing to worry about in mm. August. Quick look at the stocks. Um, if you look here, this is again for last week. It's not a, a monthly chart here. You know, Axon up 24%, Fortinet up 23%, Cal, Cal, Calanova up 18.89%, but nothing too much here. Even Eli Lilly, a big company there, up 10 point. CrowdStrike that was in the news recently, up 10.56%. Mm -hmm. If we go to the other end, Super microcomputer of probably obviously a much smaller stock down 18. Warner Brothers down um, 15 and a half. But nothing, in, in, Intel down 8.24%. Etsy down 7.38. But um, Walgreens Boots, that's a big, big, big stock, um, down 6.97. But 
Nothing too much. Pfizer, obviously, people know Pfizer down 0.6. Again, nothing to be worried about, all that sort of stuff. So I really don't know what's going on there in terms of people thinking, hey, where is that market and, and why, why, why they were calling a crash? There's nothing to be worried about. If I go and look at a monthly basis and look at the same thing on the S&P 500 stocks, you know, it takes a while to go through 500 stocks to get the chart up. Um, but you're seeing there's nothing to be big. This is the worst for the whole month. And we're not seeing anything crashing there. You would mm. expect to see a lot bigger figures on all that through there. But hopefully this is showing people that what you see in the news is something you shouldn't be following. In fact, if you follow announcements, you're doing the wrong thing. If you're following the news, you're following the wrong thing. If you're following the herd, you're always going the wrong way. And it's something that I've known for decades and decades and decades. And I think, you know, I've read enough personal development books. It basically says if you're following the herd, you're in the wrong direction because the herd gets it wrong most of the time. And that's not what you want to do. If you want to be in the top 10% of investors and traders, then you've got to do the opposite of what the market's telling you to do. Absolutely. Couldn't have said it any better. All right. So what's hot in the market this week? Well, on your screen right now is my hot stock tip for the week, which is Downer EDI Limited Stock Ticker Code D-O-W. So this stock is a very, very interesting stock, Dale Downer. I mean, let's start off here on the monthly chart to zoom that out for everybody. But what's real interesting about Downer is clearly this $3 level. I mean, it's a no-brainer. Since oh, it is a no-brainer. Back to November, March 2024, you can but see. The materials is going to go. This will go. Absolutely, yeah. And that's what, really what we're waiting for. And I guess contrary to materials, this mm. one here is actually holding up a bit better. Materials is also finding some support now as a general hole in the sector around that $16,000, $17,000 level. But this one you can see has been uh, rising a little bit before that, which is about that February 2023, making these higher bases, coming out of this crucial $3 level. To me, right now, all things are very, very, um, I guess, interesting with Downer, the fact that when they do come out of these levels, um, you know, significant levels, we often stocks will either rise on sharply, mm. you know, like a rocket out of that level, or they'll you know, find their way through it. And generally the safer, or I guess the, the move with more longevity is the move that has legs to it, that basis higher and gives you that slow, st steady formation. When yep. you see periods like this, real sharp moves up, often coincide with real sharp moves down. Again, we saw a really sharp move out and then it fall down. Really the, the, I guess, stability came through this level, which to me speaks more smart selling rather than buying. But in this instance here, we're starting to see one, two, higher bases happening as the move's rising really early in the move, which is a very important point. So the fact that it's broken through a nice little momentum line here, I think if this stock, you know, can start to continue what it's doing, nice, slow, steady, it's going back to these, you know, 689 levels in the medium to long term, which is very, very exciting stuff. But um, just to, I guess, provide a little bit more insight on this weekly chart here with this one, have a look at where this strong selling happened really mm. back in December, Huge selling, we've cleared that now. And we're forming a nice little pattern, which all of our students would know that does speak to, if this breaks out around the 520, 530 level, this is going for another run. Do you want to, I mean, the risk reward on this is just super Amazing. right now. Mm. You know, to me, the, the potential upside is huge mm. and the potential downside is almost non-existent at the moment. Mm. And to me, that's what makes this a great stock. And a lot of traders don't look at that, do they? No. They just look and see, well, uh, and I and I see this from you know people that come to us and inquire about our courses. They come and go. Oh, I go. Why did you buy that stock? And they go. Oh, volume was up and it was coming off a fifty-two week low or something like that. Or you know, it went up twenty percent last week on strong volume. So that's their reasoning to get into it. And I went, yeah, <laughs> not good rules. But, but this is low risk, high prob probability to go up. And what you're talking about is so, so important. You're talking mm. about how do you structure a trade. Mm. And we'll I'll quickly show that what they were talking about because this is one of the most important things in trading in terms of identifying that risk reward. But I mean, if you're looking at this trade here and you're thinking if there's an opportunity through here, you've got about that 30, 40% risk. And if you know where to structure your risk, let's say through there maybe, or however mm. you do it, you can, you know, one, two, three, four X your risk, which mm. at the end of the day, when you tally all that up, is going to really add well, to Well, we that. talk a lot about that on our live show last week. Last week. So if you haven't seen our live stock market show on YouTube, um, go to last week's, last Tuesday night. Um, you'll actually be able to see a lot of what we're talking about here, what Phil was talking about just then. Absolutely. So, and it was a great show, actually. So check it out anyway. Is that it on our hot stock? That is more it to for Downer. Now we're moving on to a stock that should make you proceed with caution. Intertech 
Pivot stock ticker code IPL on your screen is the monthly chart on the left, weekly on the right. Now, Dale, again, this one, range bound, up and down, but maybe. Well, I actually like range bound stocks as a trader. I like them because, I mean, investors that hate the crap out of this thing yeah. because they, you know, make money, lose money, make money, lose money. Whereas the trader, we make money, trade short, make money, trade short. If you like to do that, so you can get multiple trades mm. in a year, or you can just make money, wait for it to come back, make money, wait for it to come back. And I used to trade a stock like this so often it wasn't funny. It'd go from a dollar to three dollars, a dollar to three dollars, a dollar to three dollars, and then went from a dollar I bought it, it went up to three dollars, and then got taken over oh. at three dollars. And I went great, washed my hand, and it was annoying because then I couldn't do the keep trading that way. Yeah. Um. So, you, but this looks great because you can see there on that monthly chart it's going. From that bottom, you know, that bottom black line, um, not quite as regular as the one I used to trade, but looking at that, you're talking about, you know, that $2 ish, $2.60, all the way up to $4 something. So, you know, we're talking 40, 50% there that oh, you yeah. can make on this when you, if you've got some good rules around trading this, and it's pretty rock solid on that. So, and to me, this is a rock star at the moment. It's right down the bottom. So, this is why I believe you're saying trade with caution because. Even though last, you know, we're halfway through August, you can see last, or currently it's trading a little bit lower, but it could come down to this level again and take off again. But I do like what you've got here, and let's go and have a look at that weekly chart and just see what you've got on in there. But last week's not a bad little week, isn't it? It opened mm. down here, gap right down. If I just zoom that up, let me bring it up full screen so everybody can see it a little bit easier. But you can see there that it gapped from here all the way down here, gapped down 2.36%. Um, and it's looking good, you know, because obviously it, it closed higher than it opened. So I think, yeah, I like it. I'd have this on my watch list, but yeah, I'd proceed with caution too, yeah. just in case. Because I mean, when we're talking about stocks mm -hmm. like this, at the end of the day, mm -hmm. when you do see an opportunity in the market or for a stock that is range bound and is more for the trader, mm -hmm. it's important that the major thing that you need to be, uh, um, I guess, on top of is how you're going to trade the stock. So what rules are you going to have in place to trade those reversals? And, you know, to the naked eye, it may seem quite easy, but you do need to know what you're doing. We need more sensitive rules, and this is the challenge. And, and I, you know, I remember I was chatting to somebody one day, uh, and they were saying they were trading. And I go, well, how do you trade? And they go, oh, I trade for you know, a few days, a few weeks. And I go, oh, that's okay. So what analysis do you do? And they go, I use fundamental analysis. And in my head, I went, you idiot. Yeah, how's that like possible? How do you, how's that possible? But then I was ch chatting to another lady that she was long, she was trying to trade blue chip stocks, but then she was using trading strategies that you use on an FX chart intraday. Yeah. And I go, no, one, no wonder you're not successful. And this is the thing is you need to have the right rules and right strategies for the right trading. So trading a stock like this, you need really sensitive rules to get in early and get out early because mm. it does range. Uh, and that's really what you need. You can't just use rules that for a blue chip, medium to longer term type of trade. So yeah, it wouldn't work. Wouldn't work. All right. Well, that is it for IPO. Now, lastly, what's not hot in the stock market this week? Monadelphus stock ticker code MND. So let's get in to the charts right now on your screen, obviously, is the monthly on the left, weekly on the right. Now, Dale, I want to go to the monthly chart on this one because there are quite a few things. That I'm disappointed at you. Bad stock for the week. Yeah, I know you like this stock. But look, all these the, the good thing about all these stocks that are in the red, eventually they will become good stocks. And that's the beautiful well, thing about it. Especially when, when materials we're... goes, this will oh, go as well. 100%. Down or EDI on this one. Yeah, absolutely. And it's a, it, the, the important thing is Wall knowing. Wall is another one. Yes. The important thing is knowing when. And that's the mm. trick as a trader. It's knowing when in terms of confirming it on a price chart so you can avoid those losing trades or avoid mm. being in, in this stock while it's falling. Because, I mean, I even like Rio now. Rio was, was a not hot stock. And to me, that stock soon will become a buying stock. So anyway, going back to Monadelphus right now, what's not hot about this one? Obviously, it's broken through this long-term momentum line. It had an opportunity last month to show us some support. It almost did that, but then it's fallen away now. So I think what's also interesting is we've got these numbers marked through here. And you'll see of all the recent runs that this stock's had, this one's run about 400% up to this point. It's run about 270 to the most recent one in December 2017. The third go it's had about a, at a decent run up has been 98% up to 0.3. And the most, most recent one, we've only done 75%. So the runs up are getting less and less, which um, obviously you know paints the picture that, hey, this is gonna um, fall for a little while. Where it's gonna fall to, that's the real question right now that we need to answer. And these 
black dashed lines are where we're, or, or I guess where the ne next significant levels of support are. So there is one train of thought that this one could get back to these levels and that's when maybe the safer opportunities to start looking at it. But again, regardless of where it does fall to, it's important to realize when it stops falling and when it gives you that confirmation, it's ready to go back up again. Oh, look, it is. And that's the thing is it's you know, good traders wait, you know, and good traders stalk the market if they don't chase the market where the vast majority, I'm talking about 80, 90% of people that say they're traders, chase the market and mm. chase stocks. Whereas I don't do that, you don't do that. We, we're at the other end of it. We're leading in terms of we're waiting for what's happening and then we make the decision, but we're prepared. And that's why this stock, I love this stock, mm -hmm. even though it's looking crap right now. Mm. So, you know, but when it does turn, I'll be on it. That's Absolutely. right. Mm, that's the point. All right. Well, thanks for watching this edition of Wealth Within's Weekly Hot Stock Tips. Now, remember to tune in to the live Australian stock market show on YouTube from 7 p.m. Eastern time every Tuesday night. Now, to find us, just type Wealth Within live in the YouTube search. Remember to have your phone ready to call in live to speak to us so we can answer your burning questions. Now, the number is 03 9290 or you can email into the show right now by sending your questions to info at wealthwithin.com.au. Now, if you want a copy of Dale's first book, you can still get it for free. You just have to pay the shipping. You can order it from our homepage, wealthwithin.com.au. And I hope you've enjoyed today's episode. And thank you, Dale, very much for your excellent comments today. Yeah, my pleasure, Phil. And uh, well done today for all that stuff that we've got on the charts and what's happening with the marketing, all the market at the moment. So why people shouldn't panic. But I am looking forward to chatting with everybody on the Australian Stock Market Show, which is live on YouTube every Tuesday night. So check it out. I'll see you there. All right. Thanks again, Dale. And thank you, everyone, for watching for now. Goodbye, good luck, and good trading.